Hey folks, Rob with two guys at a ride. Today we're out at the Burnsville Center and this is back to the 80s and I found an extremely cool car here and a pretty cool fella as well that's got a great story. And I'll let him introduce himself and introduce his fantastic car. Take Hi. it away. Great. Hi, my name is Alan. This is my 1981 DeLorean. Uh, it's an early car. My wife and I have owned it for four years, almost to the day. We picked it up Father's Day weekend 2015 in Illinois. Uh, I was looking specifically for an early car. Uh, one of the things that I like about the early cars is that it has the gas flap hood. So in order to put gas in, I can flip the uh, flap up, I can get at the gas tank. It also has the groove, so there's a little more interest to the hood. Uh, later in production, they got rid of the gas flap. You actually had to open the hood in order to put gas in the car. Uh, even later in production, they got rid of the grooves. It was a flat hood, and it had a little DeLorean logo up in the front corner. Uh, that's actually my wife's favorite version of the hood. Uh, I keep telling her if she'd like to get a car like that, we should get a second one. <laughs> uh, she goes back and forth. She's not completely opposed to the idea. Uh, other well, early features about uh, the DeLorean is it has uh, DeLorean wheels are painted. Uh, these are dark gray painted wheels as opposed to silver wheels. Uh, there are some other features, but they're a little bit more subtle. It's generally the wheels and the hood that let you know if you're looking at an early or late car. Okay. One of the interesting things about DeLoreans is that they never restarted the sequence number in the VIN. So generally, if you're going to make a car for multiple years, you have, you know, the VIN, it tells a bit about the car, including what model year it is, and then the sequence number, the last like six digits of the VIN, start over at one. 1981 DeLorean started with VIN 1. The first 500 were used as production mules, test cars. They were not sold to the public. So right around 500 to 501 is the first production car that was sold. This is VIN 1121, so it's about the 621st car off the assembly line. When they started with the 1982 DeLoreans, they didn't start counting at VIN 1 again. They started counting around VIN 10,000. When they did the 1983 DeLoreans, they didn't start at VIN 1 again. They started around VIN 12,000. So the last five digits of a DeLorean VIN are unique for every car. There is no other DeLorean whose last five digits are 01121. Wow. So this is DeLorean 1121. Um, we love the car. Uh, when I told my wife I wanted to get the car, we sort of made a deal. I went back to school to finish a degree. I had not been very successful originally, and I wanted a little motivation. I said, if I finish my degree, I'd like to get myself something. She said, what are you talking about? I said, I'd like a DeLorean. She said, okay. I went back to school. I finished my degree. I graduated, and I said, great, where are the keys to the car? She said, uh, yeah, we can't afford a DeLorean. You were serious? I said, yeah, I was serious. She said, we'll figure out how to make it happen. Now, I think she likes the car more than I do. I think that she would not sell this car over her dead body. Okay, so Alan, what brought you to a DeLorean? What's your draw to this car? So the DeLorean came out in 81. Uh, DeLorean Motor Company was making news with raising financing, uh, showing prototypes on the auto show circuit, starting in the mid-70s. I remember being in second grade, 
probably around 1976. I'm dating myself a little bit. <laughs> uh, I like cars, but I, I was a little kid. I like Hot Wheels cars. I built plastic models when I was younger. I probably yep. hadn't even built my first plastic model yet. A buddy of mine was much more into cars. He, in second grade, was looking at, you know, the car magazines. Okay. Car and Driver, Road and Track, whoever it was. And I remember him talking about this guy who was going to build this car. And it was going to be unpainted. And the doors were going to open funny. And he was all excited. And I was a little kid. I didn't care. And I didn't really give it much more thought. Fast forward, I saw Back to the Future. And I was probably around 20 years old. I didn't originally see it in the theater. I probably saw it on VHS the first time. For those of you who remember what VHS is. <laughs> I remember what beta was, so come on now. <laughs> I, I remember beta being better. I'm disappointed we didn't keep it. Uh, I'm watching Back to the Future, and of course there's the big reveal scene. Uh -huh. Marty is at Twin Pines Mall uh, with a video camera. Doc wants him to film. And Doc's van, the back opens up, all the smoke and fog comes out, and you hear the wonderful sound, which DeLoreans don't sound like. Uh, the car backs out, and you see in the rear bumper the DeLorean. It's uh, it's actually in, you know an impression into the rear bumper. Mm -hmm. And then there's, of course, the famous line from the movie, Doc, are you telling me you built a time machine out of a DeLorean? <laughs> and Doc's response, of course, is, well, the way I see it, if you're going to build a time machine out of a car, you may as well do it with some style. Right? So, you know, between that dialogue and seeing the word on the rear bumper, yep. I start thinking, is that a real car? You know, at, at first I thought it was actually a prop for the movie. Oh, so like just a, a, a one-off built movie car. Exactly. Got you. It's and I think, uh, you know, I'm thinking, I wonder, I'm, you know, a lot of people maybe at that time may have heard about the DeLorean, but no, you know, a lot of people didn't still know what it was. Exactly. So we were talking about uh, you know, a lot of people may not yet have really known what this car was until really that movie came along. Including myself. So I started doing some research, realized it was a real car, became interested in John DeLorean's history, which was interesting. Uh, and it occurred to me that my buddy back in second grade was probably talking about the DeLorean. So I realized I had a bit of history myself going back before the movie. Uh, that Oops, and John's story. Sure you know, got me interested in the car. Uh, the story is interesting. So when John DeLorean decided he wanted to leave General Motors and start his own car company, he needed to have a plant. He needed to have some place to build cars. And he was looking for some incentives, of course. Starting a car company is not cheap. Uh, he wanted uh, presumably some investment and possibly some government tax incentives and I think he got both from the British government to build the car in Northern Ireland. Gotcha. Uh, if you notice my license plate is Irish 81. Uh, one of the common questions I get asked is if I'm an Notre Dame uh, <laughs> They don't quite tie in the, no. the history of the DeLorean and to I'm the... Not, uh, not, to but the, the car is. The car is from Ireland in right. 81. The car is Irish 81. But now it's powered not by an Irish engine, it's powered by a uh, PRV engine, that's Peugeot, Renault, Volvo. Okay. The three companies got together and designed and built the engine. All three of them have used them in various of their cars. Uh, it was used widely in older Volvos, uh, 70s and 80s. Uh, variants of this engine were produced into the 90s. Uh, the car that most people might be familiar with that had, again, a variant of this engine, not quite identical. Okay. If you're familiar with the movie The Blues Brothers, oh, yes. the movie, uh, the car that they drove was a Dodge Monica. Yes. Uh, if you were around in those days and you remember the K-Car era, yes. there was a K-Car era Monaco. It was a little smaller, a little more square okay. than the Blues Brothers Monaco. Oh. It looked kind of like a big bloated K car right. way, uh, that had a variant of the PRV because back in the day, Chrysler Corporation was in bed with Renault. Okay, okay. 
Now, um, you've done a few things to this engine to as upgrades. Uh, tell me a little bit about some of the things you've done. So we had a stage two conversion done to the car. Uh, what that is is basically heads, cam, and exhaust. So they ported the heads, they did a more aggressive cam, and they did headers with a more free-flowing, all stainless exhaust. Uh, from the factory, the PRV in this variant uh, was rated at 130 horsepower at the crank. So if you do the math, it's probably close to 100 horsepower at the wheels. Okay. Uh, not horrible for a 2,700 pound car, but it's not a speed demon. Uh, the uh, DeLorean repair facility that does the stage two upgrade claims that that gets you up to 197 horsepower. It's one of the worst kept secrets in the DeLorean community <laughs> that the likelihood of this engine putting out 197 horsepower after the stage two is pretty low. I'd be happy with 170. Uh, I would like to get the car on a dyno sometime this season. We just had that done over winter. Okay. And uh, I would like to find out what it's actually putting out. Now, I noticed too, that uh, underneath the back uh, cover, uh, what do you call this? this uh, uh, so these are the louvers. The, the louvers. louvers okay. Cover. You do have a few signatures, and I mean, many, many of them are really, really cool. But the one I've found the coolest are these two right here. And tell me about those guys, who they were, and what they did for uh, DeLorean. Okay. So uh, the one on the left is Chris Duval, and the one on the right is Jeff Sinor, and. And they called themselves the Pogs. They worked for DeLorean Motor Company back in the day. Uh, they worked in North America. They were here. And the Pogs, uh, they called themselves Pogs because they said they looked like pigs but worked like dogs. <laughs> the work they did was uh, the cars were built in Northern Ireland and it was a young uh, it was a young company with a young workforce building the cars. Okay. Uh, they built cars for a little over two years. But you said they had never built cars in Northern Ireland before. So here it was, it was all based brand on tax workforce. incentives and brand new workforce. Yep. And trust upon them to build this state-of-the-art brand new sports car. Correct. And they, they did a great <laughs> job, but uh, earlier cars had some quality issues. Okay. So the Pogs were charged with working at quality assurance centers uh, here in North America. Okay. Cars would be delivered from Ireland. They would go through a quality assurance center where uh, people who had worked in the automotive industry, uh, Chris and Jeff, uh, had worked for GM, I want to say both of them maybe for Chevy or Pontiac, okay. or one for one of the two and one for the other. Okay. And they worked making sure that the cars were really ready to be delivered to uh, their their buyers, their new owners. Okay. And one of the interesting stories is that a guy who I met at a DeLorean convention had what effectively was a parts car when you know some of the pods at the quality assurance centers needed parts to repair one of the cars that was going to be delivered they would pull the parts off of this car so this car became a little bit of a hodgepodge of earlier features later features as they put it back together to sell it ultimately when so they, no they had a production ready car that they actually used as a donor car because like you're saying if they couldn't get a part that if, they, if one rolling down the line had a fault in one of its parts and they didn't have any more of those parts, they grabbed it off of that donor car. Correct. Absolutely. So then that donor car was eventually rebuilt with parts from various runs of the timeline of the DeLorean. So what a cool car that must be. Oh Correct. my gosh. Oh, and the owner absolutely loves that. <laughs> <laughs> he, he enjoys the fact that he has that. So Alan, you're telling me you drive your car and you drive it with confidence, even though it's a, it's, it's you know, it's age, yep. but you drive it a lot and you take it a lot of places. Why don't you tell us about that? Absolutely. So my wife and I picked it up at the uh, Illinois repair facility four years ago. We drove it home the second or third day we owned it, 400 miles. I was white knuckled all the way. I was nervous performed great, no issues. Since then, this car has been on three road rallies. I've driven it in pouring rain. I've driven it 300 miles a day. I've driven it over 100 miles an hour in Mexico. <laughs> um, 
I've had this car on an autocross track. I've had this car on a quarter mile track. Wow. Uh, there was a little disappointment when I couldn't <laughs> hit 88 miles an hour uh, for my trap speed, but it did about 81 miles an hour in 17 seconds. Okay. That was before the stage two upgrade. Uh, I would like to get the car dynoed. I think I mentioned that earlier. I'd like to get it on a quarter mile track again and see what happens. Oh, nice. So awesome. I drive this car with confidence. I drive it as much as I can. I drive it wherever I can, whenever I can. And that's the fun part about it. It's, it's cool to look at, but actually to get to enjoy it by driving it and experiencing what it was meant to do and in that era and to feel again what it was like for cars at that time. That's really awesome. Awesome. So I want to tell you about right after we bought the car. My wife and I, it was the first day we owned the car. We uh, went out to dinner and we encountered a woman who was very excited to see the car. The doors were closed, the car was locked and she was taking pictures and she was very excited to see the car. Uh, we offered to open the doors, you know, it's kind of fun seeing the car with the doors up. Generally at car shows we do that. And she was, yeah, that would be great, please do. I'd love to get some pictures with the doors open. And I said, would you like to take a seat behind the wheel? You know, I'll take your phone, I can take your picture, you know, sitting behind the wheel of a DeLorean. And she was so excited, she was nearly in tears. She thought that was, you know, the, get, the greatest thing. So we did, we put her in the driver's seat, we took some pictures and she thought that was a blast. Uh, my wife and I learned a lesson there uh, in the DeLorean community. It's not uncommon for the cars to be parked with the doors open at car shows. It's sort of the cool shot. Uh, but frequently what people do is they'll print out signs, you know, please don't touch the car. You know, I'm not sure if you noticed as we were walking around the car, it's got a couple striker pins front mm -hmm. and back and people will put bars across there to dissuade people from jumping in the cars. But my wife and I plan to do that and we never have because of the excitement from that first woman we encountered that first day we owned the car. The, the excitement was just infectious and the pleasure she felt from being able to interact with the car was, you know, made her so happy and made her feel so good. We, we want to keep doing that. Um, so we've had hundreds of people in and out of the car for pictures and generally we, we let people do that but you know, we do ask that people, you know, ask before they just hop in the car. There's car show etiquette. Right. So, you know, it's a special car. We, people at car shows generally love to talk about their car, love to show off their car. But if you actually want to touch the car or sit in the car, please remember to ask. And if you find us at a car show, we will be more than happy to put you behind the wheel and take your picture. That's so awesome. Thank you. So uh, now the interior, it, it's, it's original? The interior is all original, yes. Uh, wow. We've done, at, at this point, the interior is as it was back in 81, uh, save one exception. I did actually have an aftermarket cruise control system installed. Okay. So there's a second stock coming out of the left-hand side of the steering column uh, for the cruise control. Uh, okay. Other than that, it is exactly as it left the factory back in 1981, April 81. Wow. Now, what was top speed on this vehicle at the time? Do you recall? Oh, goodness. Not exactly. I want to say it's around 120. Wow. So, not a lot of horsepower. Decent top speed, though. Yes. But it was pretty light car. Uh, 2,700 pounds. Okay. That's fantastic. You know what, Alan? Thank you so much for sharing this early model DMC-12 DeLorean. It's fantastic. Folks, if you like what you see, give us a thumbs up. If you want to leave some comments below, let us know as well. Give us some thoughts. Give us some ideas. If you own a DeLorean or any of those, maybe you've had one in your life or a neighbor or something like that. But, uh, you know, Alan's living the dream. He actually owns one. And it sounds like maybe one day his wife might let him or he might let his wife <laughs> buy one of her own. And then he'll have, have a nice pair of them. So, Alan, absolutely. thank you so much for sharing your beautiful car. Thank you for the story. It's absolutely fantastic. You're very welcome. And thank you for taking the time. You bet.